so welcome everyone again we were talking about the pressure build up test and uh, this is how we will be discussing the actual build up test that is different from the ideal pressure build up test in actual pressure build up test this horner's plot having three distinct or say elusive region that need to be defined the first region is the early time region the middle region is the middle time region and the later is the late time region in the early time region the well test data is distorted because of well bore effects and this is for a build up case what we had assumed in the ideal build up test is that when we set in the well at the well head the q suddenly goes to zero at the send phase as well but actually this is not happening at the send phase some time is taken for the well to get the stabilized and stabilized means at the send phase q becomes zero and that time is called well bore storage time so we will be see what how to calculate that time but here you understand that the early time region is mostly the well bore effects or the skin effect that is there around the well bore and because of that only this early time region distortion is there in the horner's plot data and the middle time region is the actual uh, transient data from the reservoir where fluid flow in the reservoir is happening and the record of data is the represent representation of those uh, fluid flow inside the porous media in the main reservoir and the late time region is something where the fluid flow is somewhere near to the boundary of the reservoir and because of this boundary effect this pressure behavior is not as if like it is in the middle of the reservoir and because of that some distortion in the data is there and actually this certain assumptions were there while building this ideal pressure build up test and this when there is a deviation from this assumptions so there will be a complication complication arised in this horner's plotting for actual reservoir so first case that is assumption is if reservoir is bounded reservoir instead of infinite acting reservoir is the horner plotting technique is valid so let us see so when there is a bounded reservoir neither the ei function solution nor ln approximation is applicable we had seen this aspect in detail in the previous topics so particularly this ei function solution this equation particular equation that is written for flowing pressure at the well head or at the send phase because of this infinite acting uh, reservoir and line source well and an ln approximation was applied this is no longer valid for bonded reservoir so instead we can apply the bonded reservoir cylindrical reservoir case for a finite acting reservoir and the equation something will look like this one so here the zero study case is there and we can apply this kind of equations so the question i give to you that can we apply the horner's plotting technique for this bonded reservoir the answer is yes it was the cobb and smith who proposed that horner's plot is still applicable for a bonded reservoir or the one of the crucial aspect here will be the selection of the mtr region the concept of the or the conclusion of cobb and smith was based on the mds approach had chinson approach which suggested that instead of plotting 
ordinals plot that was PWS versus log of TP plus delta T divided by delta T. We plotted between PWS versus log T. And in that case, when we plot, we assume that TP is sufficiently larger than delta T. That means well is draining for longer period of time and well has reached a pseudo steady condition. So log TP plus delta T will reduce down to TP and that is something constant and other aspect of the actual build up test ideal pressure de, uh, ideal pressure build up equation will reduce down to is PWS equal to constant plus slope into log of delta T. So even here slope is slope either in the ideal pressure draw uh, build up slope or here in this zero study case. So we can apply this Horner's plotting technique and the slope will be slope even for the bonded reservoir and from the slope only we can go estimating the reservoir properties. The second assumption that was single phase fluid liquid is flowing in the porous media. So here we can take this three phase fluid flow or we can calculate the combined or total compressibility that will be compressibility of oil into oil saturation and plus compressibility of water into saturation of water in the porous media plus compressibility of gas into saturation of gas plus compressibility of formation altogether is averaged out to total compressibility and also this compressibility of oil will be dependent on this PVT parameter and will be something written like that. Likely for water it will be written like that and when we replace this compressibility with total compressibility the equation of diffusivity we take care of these assumptions. And third assumption is the homogeneous reservoir assumptions. Actually, there is no reservoir which is homogeneous, completely homogeneous. So this homogeneous, when you say homogeneity is lost or say heterogeneity is high, this heterogeneity is two type. One is called massive heterogeneity or other is called uh, or massive heterogeneity or localized heterogeneity or that is called not localized but distributed heterogeneity. So when massive heterogeneity is there or in a localized portion of the reservoir, it would behave like a boundary of the reservoir, some kind of boundary and that will be reflected in the late time region, the transient test data or when distributed heterogeneity is there, it will be averaged out in the middle time region of the transient twist data.